Hello, I'm Apostle Brenda Medley, and I am so excited about what the Lord is doing. I wanted to come on today to tell you, yeah, you guessed it, the characteristics of a prophet. And today we're going to be talking about specifically why prophets are so bossy. Uh, let us have a word of prayer. Oh God, eternal, we thank you that you are God and beside you there is none other. You are high and lifted up and we thank you. We glorify you. We praise you. We extol you. We bless your holy name. Oh God, we pray that you would bless us, give us insight and revelation and understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Okay, here we go. So why are prophets so bossy? Uh, a lot of people say that prophets are bossy, but really it's not that prophets are bossy. It is that we are authoritative. And I want to kind of break down what I mean by that. Imagine that the Lord gives you a message and he said, he tells you what he wants you to say, who he wants you to say it to, uh, why he wants you to say it. And he puts this pressing, this unction, but it's actually more than an unction because there's like this drive, like this pressing that's in your spirit. And you, you keep it there in your spirit until the time that you release it. You're not released until you release that word. And as a result of that, Prophets tend to be a little uh, authoritative. I would not say bossy because prophets have to take authority over so many things just to bring forth a message. Imagine that first of all, a lot of messages are designed to point people back to Jesus. They're designed so that individuals will have the opportunity to destroy yokes that are in their lives, amen, to be able to move to the next level, to be able to, to hear God, to overcome whatever the obstacle is, whatever the problem is, so that they can move into position to where God is taking them. And so when God gives you a word like that as a prophet, your desire is to bring that word with power, bring that word with authority and not allow anything to keep you from delivering that word. And so you come off sometimes as being bossy, but you have to be authoritative because you are entering into a spiritual realm and in that spiritual realm, there are all kinds of spirits there. There are angelic spirits, but there are also demonic spirits. There are spirits of deception. There are spirits that come to bind you up, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And there are angelic spirits to encourage, to lift you up, to to bring about understanding and strength and exhortation. And then you're you have to deal with the person to which the message is going to and their own personal spirit. Sometimes they receive the word with gladness. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they deny the word. Sometimes they want nothing to do with the word and they want nothing to do with you. And so, as a prophet or a prophetess, you must be authoritative because you have got to take authority over so many different kinds of spirits in order to bring the word of God through. Glory to God in power, glory to God, so that the Lord can do what needs to be done. And so the prophet will be very authoritative and, and will be very definitive about what the word is, what God has spoken, what God is doing. So the prophet may say, the Lord said this or that. The Lord is going to do this or that. 
I want to read a scripture in your hearing. And then afterwards, I want to give you a testimony, a personal testimony. This scripture is found in 1 Peter chapter number one, and I'm only going to read verse number 25. And this is what the word of God says. It says, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. God's word will not change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will endure forever. It goes on to say, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Some years ago, there was a young man, and I'm not going to call his name, but there was a young man, and this young man had been sick, and I got a message to go to the hospital and visit him. And when I got there, he looked fine. I mean, he was talking and he was excited because the doctor had told him that he could go home the next day and he was preparing to go home. We visited, we prayed, we talked, we rejoiced. And then I got up, walked out of the room, walked down the hall near the elevator. And suddenly I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and say, go back to the room and tell him, unless he repents, he will not recover. And my thought was, oh no, I didn't want to hear that. And I certainly didn't want to tell the young man that. He was overjoyed with coming home. And again, he looked fine. He didn't even look like he was sick. He looked like everything was all right. But the Lord said to me, go back and tell him that unless he repents, he will not recover. So I turned around and started heading toward his room to bring him the word that God had given to me. Didn't want to give him this word. And I walked in the room, he's watching TV and he's smiling and he's laughing at the show that was on the television. And I said to him, can you turn that off for a moment? The Lord gave me a word for you. And of course this young man knew me. And um, so I, I told him, I said, I know you're pre preparing to go home tomorrow, but God said, Unless you repent, you will not leave this hospital. Unless you repent, you will not live. And he looked at me and said, well, my doctor said I am fine. They could not find anything wrong. They don't know why I had that episode, but I feel fine and I know I'm going home. And I repeated it a second time. God said that unless you repent, you will not leave this hospital alive. And he told me again, no, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. I don't want to hear that. And I said to him, I don't want to say this, but God said, unless you repent, you will not leave this hospital and then I said to him, repent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he shook his head no and asked me to leave his room. And when I did, I'm telling you, I felt like my heart dropped because I knew that this was a definitive word. This was a word that was going to come to pass. It was not a conditional prophecy. And we're going to talk about that. But it was not a conditional prophecy. This was an absolute prophecy that God had already judged the situation. And unless this young man was obedient, and by the way, not all sickness is unto death. And not all sickness is as a result of sin. I just wanted to throw that in there. And I left there and went in the lobby of the hospital and I cried. Finally got myself together, drove home 
with a very, very heavy heart and prayed for him. Went to bed, phone rang. It must have been about three or four in the morning. And I and the the voice on the other end said, Can you come back to the hospital? And I said, What's wrong? And they said, He's asking for you. Please come back to the hospital. And so I got up and I went back to the hospital. I was amazed when I walked in his room and he was in a full oxygen tent. He was covered in sores from his face, his arms, his legs. I mean, covered in sores. Now, mind you, I had just seen this young man just a few hours ago and he was fine. There was no sores there. there. He was talking about, he felt great. He was going home. And in a few short hours, he went from, from eight o'clock to about three or four in the morning, covered in sores, glory be to God, and crying out, praise God. And when I came in the room and I looked at him, he could not even speak. And I began to pray. I began to pray for him. And as I was praying, he was just shaking his head. I don't know to this day what the shaking of the head was about, but he just shook his head and then he fell into a coma and he died. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm only telling you this story so that you can understand that many times when prophets are coming off as being bossy, it is not that they are being bossy. They are being authoritative because of a word that the Lord has given them. Now, there's come, there's sometimes that, you know, the Lord will give a word and it's a word of prophecy and that word of prophecy may be a conditional word it is conditional where god says if you do this then i'll do that but if you don't do this then i won't do that praise god and certainly uh what happened to that young man that was a conditional prophecy because god said if you repent praise god if you don't repent, you will not leave this hospital. But if you repent, you will recover. There was another situation with another young man. And this young man also, I got a call, come to the hospital. I went to the hospital and he was very, very ill uh, in the hospital. And he said to me, will you pray for me? And I said, sure, we're going to pray. And, be, and I began to pray. And the Lord said to tell him to repent. And I told him what God had said and even what he needed to repent for. And this brother began to cry. He began to weep and cry out in repentance to the Lord. This young man had HIV. Praise God. And you know what happened? God healed him. And to this day, he is still walking in that healing. And so here was a conditional prophecy. If you repent, I'm going to heal you. Sometimes when prophecies don't come to pass, we automatically think it's not of God. But there are some prophecies that are conditional prophecies. And we see a lot of that in the book of Jeremiah. Praise God, where God told the people what he was going to do as a result of their sin. Glory be to God. And they didn't repent and they brought uh, destruction and damnation upon themselves as a result of their unrepentant heart. They bought bondage and ended up going into captivity. And so I want you to know praise God, that just because a prophet seems to be bossy, 
does not necessarily mean that the prophet just wants to tell you what to do, take over your life, control you, get in your business, but it is an authoritative word from the Lord that if you obey this word, you will be blessed. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I pray that you will Listen to some of the other videos on characteristics of a prophet. Remember, in a few work, weeks, we're going to be launching the prophetic school, and I want you to be a part of it. You need to be a part of this school. It will help you to better hear from the Lord, to elevate your gift, to be able to move out in faith, in confidence, and do what God has called you to do. And so more information will be coming up. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Until next time.